Hello and welcome to another Sot and Brain Hub video. This one is a rapid review of some key brain structures, particularly looking from a sagittal view and from a superior view. We're drawing a diagram on now that resembles a medial aspect of a sagittal section and we can begin to label on some of the main structures that you'll need to know. First of all, we can label on the occipital lobe. This is important for dealing with visual information. Superior to that, we have the parietal lobe. That's important for dealing with sensory information, although it's worth mentioning that it's not dealing with special sensory information. At the front, of course, we have the frontal lobe, important for working memory, important for reasoning and uh, problem solving. Continuous with the spinal cord, at the inferior end, we have the medulla oblongata. Uh, above that, we have a bulge that sticks out on the brainstem called the pons, important for relaying information between the cerebral cortex and the cerebellum. Above that, we have an area known as the midbrain, and that's part of the brain stem. And superior to that, we have an area which is very distinctive, called the corpus callosum, important for sharing information between the two hemispheres. Slightly posterior to that, and almost looking dead bang in the centre here of this section, is the thalamus, an important relay between the cortex and the spinal cord. Below and anterior to that, we have the hypothalamus. Remember, hypo meaning below the thalamus. Important for dealing with uh, physiological function, particularly dealing with equilibrium. That's connected to a glandular structure called the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus would produce two hormones released by that gland called oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone. Posteriorly, we have the cerebellum. The cerebellum is really important for balance. It's important, again, for maintaining a trajectory of movement and a measured movement and it's also important for dealing with motor programs and storing of motor memory. Going back to the diencephalon area again we have the septum pellucidum. This is essentially a membrane that stretches across the thalamus and is important for separating the lateral ventricles. We have a structure which is associated with the corpus callosum and this is a bulge at the anterior surface of the corpus callosum called the anterior commissure and again this is a selective area of axonal white fibers which is important for sharing information between the two hemispheres so the corpus callosum is the main structure and it has a little nodule if you like called the anterior commissure which is anterior and likewise we have one at the other end of the corpus callosum and this is known as the posterior commissure. So sharing of information comes from the corpus callosum, the anterior commissure, and the posterior commissure. We can also draw on here the fourth ventricle, which is where we'd expect to see CSF, and this is trapped between the cerebellum and the brainstem. We've got the fornix, which is continuous with the hippocampus and the mammary bodies, part of the limbic system. And we can also draw on here the paracentral lobule, which is an overlapping part of the motor strip and the sensory strip and runs either side of the central sulcus. So it is shared between being partly parietal lobe and frontal lobe. So they are the main structures that we can see from a sagittal view. And we can move on now to look at a superior view where we can see both hemis hemispheres from this view and running down the middle um, we can see the separation between those two hemispheres. This is known as the longitudinal fissure, and this separates the two hemispheres. If we were able to prise the hemispheres apart, we'd see the corpus callosum. In the frontal lobe, we can separate this out to the superior frontal gyrus, which is running along the closest edge to the longitudinal fissure. And moving down in the frontal lobe, we have the middle frontal gyrus and we also have the inferior frontal gyrus. If we make our way more posteriorly, looking at this superior view, we can begin to label some structures that are really, really important for motor control and for sensory control. So here we have the central sulcus labeled that separates the frontal lobe from the from the parietal lobe. We have the precentral gyrus, which is anterior to that, and the postcentral gyrus, and they are also known as the primary motor cortex and the primary sensory cortex. So the anatomical name is precentral gyrus and postcentral gyrus, but the functional names are primary motor cortex and primary sensory cortex. 
the primary motor cortex is in the frontal lobe, the primary sensory cortex is in the parietal lobe. Posterior to that, we have the superior parietal lobule, which is back in the parietal lobe. And that finishes this video. Subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.